Well, the day is finally here. Today is spray foam day, and we've got everything set up here, so uh, it's all framed in, and I did a couple of other things. I finished the back here so that um, we can have some structure to spray foam against, and then uh, the floor is done. Now, there's a couple challenges that I wanted to just mention when you're spray foaming is temperature is kind of everything when you're spray foaming. Um, the higher the temperature, usually the better. Uh, because the spray foam canisters that I got behind me, I'll show you those in a minute, they operate the best at um, warmer temperatures, apparently. Uh, this is just from research I've done right here on YouTube, so uh, you can go and hear it from the experts themselves other than from a dummy like me. So, right now it's February. I don't know when you're watching this, but right now it's February, and it is pretty dang cold outside. Uh, actually, today's, today's warmer. Today's about... 35, 40 degrees, but it has been pretty cold. Um, well out of the, uh, the range that you're supposed to be doing this. So um, my, my neighbor Jim was very nice and let me use his uh, facility here that's near my house. And uh, it's a climate controlled facility so we can keep it uh, within those ranges. I'm also running a, a space heater back here within the, um, within the trailer itself uh, to one, keep the canisters warm and two, to heat up the inside of this. So we're, we're hot boxing? No, that's not the right phrase. So this is our spray foam. This is a Dow or DuPont uh, Froth Pack 650. Hopefully it's enough to do this. I, I think I calculated right, so I'll have a little bit left over, which will be good. But as you can see here, we've got the space heater going, keeping these guys warm. There's a temperature readout on the B tank. And we're currently at 75, so that's pretty good. Um, we'll just probably keep the heater on these. I feel like I'm probably as, as prepared as I can be on such short notice, so. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep these uh, at a good temperature here. There's just a couple of other things that we need to do beforehand to get ready to spray foam. So let's do those last couple things, and then we'll get to the main event, a spray foam. So one of the first things we need to do is we need to drill out two holes or cut out two holes here and here. This one will be for 50 amp service. This one will be for our cable pass through. And we want them separated so we don't get any uh, noise or hum on the audio lines. Uh, I think that'll be more than sufficient. This will end up coming up here to a circuit breaker box. And then the audio will come over here to a panel somewhere over here in order to, to get audio into the truck, audio and video. So. That is the first thing we need to do. And then another thing we're gonna do is these doors. So I wasn't sure if I was gonna spray behind these, but I think I will. So we took off the, any of the brackets that are on here. We're gonna carefully peel this trim off and this plywood because I really wanna use them again because they're, they're nice and they've, they look very nice. So we're just gonna try to keep those. If not, we'll replace them with something. So the 50 amp service will be about here and or somewhere around here and the audio will be about right here. And that's, that's about where I want them, just boom, boom. And then um, they're separated enough where we won't get any uh, buzz and we'll run this in and up to a panel and then we'll run this uh, audio pass through. Um, we'll just pass cables through and then on the other side, we'll have a panel on the inside um, with connections to plug in audio and video. So that should be it. So. Uh, that's that's the next thing. So let's do that while the while the box is heating up.
it took a little bit longer than expected. That took me about almost two hours to do all that extra prep work, but we got it done. We got um, these guys done here. So there's our cable pass through and there's our 50 amp. Yeah, I went a little too crazy there with the uh, caulk, but I want that thing to be as tight as possible. It also has its own ceiling ring on that 50 amp. This one didn't, so I had to caulk that one and I'm hoping it stays in place. This should get some more rigidity once we spray foam as well. Um, we also took the panels off of here. Unbeknownst to me, this, uh, these little plates are here. That makes sense. But we're, we're gonna leave those in as we spray foam around. Same with here, uh, because this is where the bar is. We've got one up top, one in the middle, and one down below. We also took the uh, plywood off of the door. So I'm gonna leave that close and just spray, spray foam it as if it's the wall. So now is the time where we gotta get our PPE on and uh, make sure everything is good to go. I think the temperatures are okay. It's not quite as warm as I would like, but then I might die of heat exhaustion. I don't want that. Here's the plan of action, you ready? So we're gonna do the ceiling first and go all the way down. Actually, we'll probably start down there and move our way back. And then we'll do one wall here and one wall over there. And then we'll do the floor. Now, I can't stop for more than 30 seconds or else I have to do some stuff. So. I need to make it so it's just all like all one big motion basically. So that's the plan. I don't think it should take longer than about 15 to 20 minutes to actually do the spray foaming because it's not like a huge space. So I think we'll be okay that way. Uh, well, uh, let's get at it. Well, <clears throat> this is a fail. Well, kind of a fail. So um, we did pretty good on the ceiling and into the back, the nose and everything. And then about here, I was thinking something weird's going on because it's, it's like gooey. It's not setting properly. And, and then I, I pulled off the nozzle and realized only one of the chemicals was spraying. So I got around to kind of over here um, and that's when I realized that, that there was something going on. Checked it and it was no bueno. So, so, so much for the spray foam. Um, I'm thinking I'll just uh, get the foam board for the rest of this because that's all I can really do. So, uh, but... Dang it, all that prep for not a good experience. And now I can't get the other the other chemical to spray. I can't get both of them to spray because I think I used too much of the one, right? So to get over to here, I probably used all of chemical B but not chemical A. So it's all gone and chemical A, chemical B is all gone and chemical A is almost full so suck oh well you win some you lose some so we'll go get some uh foam board to finish off the rest of this stuff ah oh well
I'm pretty sure I did that. Well, I did that, that's for sure. Let me see. Let me see if there's a... Mm, no? No, I did that too. Let's see, I did, I did that. And I did that. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah, here it is. This, this is what I didn't do. <clears throat> no, no, I did that. Hmm. Anyway, I don't know. <sighs> didn't work. Well, half worked, right? So it's a few days later since the spray foam debacle, so. Uh, as you can see, I went and got the, the purple foam board that everybody loves, and so insulation is pretty much done. There's just one place I need to do, which is back here on the door, but that's, I need to cut a hole for the RV latch, so I'm waiting to do that before I finish up the, uh, the insulation there, but everything else is done, the floor is done, uh, and I've already got one sheet of plywood down, uh, that's going to be our base after the insulation, and uh, then we're... Well, what are we gonna do after that? Oh, we're gonna run electrical. The funny thing is that I read that instruction manual like five times. So here's what actually happened with the spray foam. So as I was going along here, um, uh, everything was just fine. I purged the valves, how, is, how everybody says to do. Uh, so I was getting fluid down both hoses, all that fun stuff. They were coming out just fine uh, at the nozzle. And uh, then uh, what I think happened is, well, I know what happened. I didn't open up the valve after I'd purged everything. So I didn't open it up all the way. Uh, so one chemical was feeding faster than the other chemical. And then uh, I think it was chemical A, as soon as it didn't have enough pressure, because I just barely had it open and the pressure dropped in the tank because I was using it, uh, it just wasn't spitting out anything. So once I figured that out, I went back and looked, uh, popped off the nozzle, spraying it, see if it was you know, if the chemicals were coming through and um, only the one was coming out. And I went and opened up the one that wasn't, uh, chemical A, and it started flowing. But then by that time I'd used up pretty much all of chemical B. So I had this much left to be able to do. So kind of sucks. Uh, I got the roof done and I got the nose up front done, like I said earlier, but that's what happened. So if you're thinking of doing a, a froth pack like this, just be sure once you purge the hoses and, and everything, and you make sure everything's spraying properly, make sure those valves are all the way open and you won't get screwed like I did. Anyways, now, we'll see you later.